this video, we're going to take a look at the well ordering principle and strong induction, which should round out our study of proof by induction. So up to this point, we've done quite a few proofs with mathematical induction, but we really didn't talk about the well ordering principle. And the well ordering principle, while you can use it to actually prove things, is also just an important concept to understand in our proofs by mathematical induction. The well ordering principle says that every non-empty set of non-negative integers has a least element. So that means if I'm dealing with z um, or the positive values of z or the positive values of z as n is greater than or equal to 4, etc., all of these have a least element. This least element would be 1 because that's the positive integers. This least element would be 4 because it tells me to start at 4. If they just said non-negative integers, then that means I'm starting at 0. And that means that is the least element. Now why is it important to know what the least element is? Because in mathematical induction, you must start with the least element. Now, if I told you to instead use Q, which is the rational numbers, is there, in fact, a least rational number? No, there's not. So the well-ordering principle talks only about integers. So there's no least element here, because remember, if I'm dealing with a rational number, that's me dividing two values. So to make that number smaller, I just divide by a larger value. Therefore, there is no least element. So it's really important that we understand the well-ordering principle works with non-negative integers. And that's why up to this point, when we're doing all of our induction examples, we have used non-negative integers. So what I want to do is look at a proof by induction, and then we'll look at it again using the same proof with strong induction so that we can see the difference between the two. So in this question, we're asked to prove that every amount of postage of 12 cents or more can be formed using 4 cent and 5 cent stamps. So of course, P of N is the statement that the postage of N cents can be formed using 4 and 5 cent stamps, assuming N is greater than or equal to 12. Remember, since I'm starting with 12, that's going to be my basis step. So if I wanted to make um, 12 cent stamps, I would use three four cent stamps. And that would give me 12 cents, and therefore I've shown the basis is true. For my inductive step, remember I'm going to assume, so my inductive hypothesis is that we can make change, or sorry, we can, um, we can have postage of k cents using 4 and 5 cent stamps. So we're assuming that that is true. I then have to show that assuming I can make change of k cents, then I can make postage. I keep saying change. I'm talking about postage. I, I'm sorry that I can make postage of k plus 1 cents using 4 and 5 cent stamps. So let's look at this proof by induction actually using cases. So case 1 would be that I have used one or more four cent stamps. So let's go ahead and look at that case. And in that case, I'm saying that if I've used a four cent stamp for my K cent postage, then I can replace my four cent stamp 
with a five cent stamp. And therefore, we can say that K plus one postage was formed because obviously that is just one more cent than before. For case two, I haven't used a four cent stamp, which obviously seems a little more daunting. But what I can say is if I haven't used a four cent stamp, um, so if no four cent stamp was used, then I've used at least three five cent stamps. How do I know that? Because n is greater than or equal to 12. So I can replace three five cent stamps with four four cent stamps, making postage of K plus one. So basically I've replaced 15 with 16 and therefore K plus one. And what I've done now is prove that in fact, I can make postage of 12 cents or more using four and five cent stamps. So let's take a look at the same proof, this time using strong induction. And strong induction says, instead of just using one basis step, let's look at up to a certain point K. So I'm going to show that I can make postage of 12 cents using four, sorry, three, four cent stamps. And I can make postage of 13 cents using two four cent stamps and one five cent stamp. And I can make postage of 14 cents by using one four cent stamp. And I can use two five cent stamps. And I can make postage of 15 cents by using three five cent stamps. So I've shown it up to 15. My inductive step says show that if P of J is true for some value um, between 12, which was my starting point and K, where K is greater than or equal to 15, then I have to show that P of K plus one is true. So my inductive hypothesis is going to be that P of K minus three is true. And I want to show that P of K plus one is true. Now you might be asking, why did I choose P of K minus three? Well, if I took three away from each of these, I would get K minus three is greater than or equal to 12. And I've already shown it for 12. So I'm really taking it back down to that starting point. So I'm just going to assume that P of K minus three is true. And so if I can make change, or sorry, make postage, I keep doing that. If I can make postage of K minus three cents, then I can make postage of K plus one cents by adding a four cent stamp. And therefore, I have proved my inductive step. Coming up next, we are going to revisit recursive definitions.